Stadium where the White Knights drill team representing the VFC. Now I direct your attention to the northeast corner of the stadium where the White Knights drill team representing the BSC Air Force ROTC detachment present our flag. And would you please rise for the playing of our national anthem conducted by Mr. David L. Mills. Eric Faulkner, 6'2", 214-pound senior out of 
touchdown sophomore out of High Springs, Florida. Rod Callaway, number 79, a 6 foot 3, 233 pound freshman. Cedar Shoals High School in Athens, Georgia, starts at the other tackle spot. The right defensive end will be Darrell Tarver, number 40, 44, 6 foot 2, 235 pound sophomore from Seal, Alabama. The linebackers today for the Blazers will be number 34, Emmett Watkins, 6 foot 203 pound senior out of Stark, Florida. And Bobby Booker getting his first start as a Blazer, 6 foot 2, 190 pound freshman from Lincolnton High School. line 
Seals comes to the near side. Fisher also in the near side. The back's in the eye. Cottle fakes the handoff. Rolls to his left. He's got good blocking. Throws him. Darian Seals complete across the 40 and Darian. A leaping catch at the 40-yard line and carries it to the 42 for a first down for Valdosta State College. A nice play that time by Ty Cottle rolling out to his right, uh, to his left, finding Darian Seals wide open over the center. First and 10, Valdosta State College on the Blazers' 42-yard line. This time, Fisher comes to the near side. Teals goes to the far side. The backs stay in the eye. Cottle's under center. Pitches it back to Darian Teals on the pitch sweep going to the right. Yeah. Johnny Harrell, rather. Harrell's up across the 45 to about the 48-yard line. Good power run there by Harrell. Went up the middle. Picked up six good yards. Gain of six on the play for Valdosta State College. The Blazers up to the 48-yard line. First and ten. This time, uh, Cottle hands it off to the fullback, Gary Clark, going over the center. Clark across the 50 and down to the West Georgia 45-yard line. That's enough yardage for a first down, a gain of about seven yards on that carry. First and ten for VSC. Knocking on the door as the Blazers take the opening kickoff at their own 25-yard line. Have moved it up to West George, West George's 45-yard line now, and have a first and ten. Cottle fakes it off to the fullback hands for Harold coming over the left side on a little trap play. Donnie dances down close to the 40-yard line, a gain of about five yards in there for Mount Austin State College. The BSC offensive line opening up nice holes against West Georgia, which is somewhat seasoned in there on the uh, on the defense. Cottle lines the Blazers up. Teal on the near side. He hands it back to Randy Fisher on a little count reverse. Randy hesitates, then dances down across the 35-yard line, about to the 34-yard line, a gain of six yards for Randy Fisher on a flanker back counter play coming back into the middle. Fisher has carried the ball so far for Valdosta State College five times this year, gaining 27 yards rushing. That time he picks up six yards and a first down for Valdosta State College at the West Georgia 34-yard line. Fisher comes to the near side, feels to the far side, the backs line up in the eye behind Ty Cottle, the freshman playing at quarterback. Cottle takes one step, throws it to Randy Fisher on the little hitch pattern. Randy's down across the 30, inside the 30, and knocked out of bounds at the 26-yard line. Randy Fisher catches his first pass in three games for Valdosta State College. That's one of the keys that Coach Mike Cavan said the Blazers had to get back into the offense. Getting the ball into Randy Fisher's hands the last two plays. BSC has run, Fisher has touched the ball both times. Not enough yardage for a first down. It's second down and two at the West Georgia 26. Kahlo is moving the team very accurately. West Georgia comes with a blitz, and, that, and Kyle hands it off to Eric Clark, going right up in the middle. Clark is down to the 20, a gain of about seven yards for the fullback out of Brunswick's Glen Academy that time, and another first down for Valdosta State College. Dave, the Blazers are moving the ball with precision, it appears. Yeah, they're using both the pass and the run to get the ball down the field. And, of course, by using that uh, rush effectively, they're able to open up the passes and get Fisher and Teals wide open. Getting Fisher and Teals into the game is what Coach Mike Kevin wanted to do. First and 10 for the Blazers at the West Georgia 20-yard line. The clock down to 10 minutes, 56 seconds left. The hitch pattern once again to Randy Fisher. He gets a nice block out here from James McCray, the tight end, who came out and put a block on the, tail, on the uh, linebacker. Randy Fisher skirts inside of the block, crosses the 15 down to the 13-yard line of West Georgia, where it will be second and three after a gain of seven. That's a nice play on the little hitch pattern where Kyle just takes the ball, turns and throws back quickly to Randy Fisher, flanked out to the near side. He picked up a good block from James McCray. Second and three for the Blazers at the West Georgia 13. Connell pitches it back to Donnie Harrell coming to the near side. Donnie looking for room, gets a little block down there and crosses the 10-yard line close to first down territory. Another block there by James McCray, the tight end. 
six foot three, 215 pound senior who played basketball at Brunswick Junior College before transferring to Mount Austin State College last year. It is a first down for VSC. It will be first and goal. The ball is inside the 10 yard line, so the Blazers have to go nine yards, nine and two third yards in four plays. Cottle hands it off to Donnie Harrell, who dances through the center, gets four yards down close to the five yard line. They may mark it back at the six, depending on where the ball was when his knee touched down. It is on the six yard line, a gain of a little over three yards for Donnie Harrell. And it will bring up a second goal for the Blazers at the six yard line. BSC goes into the power formation this time. Two fullbacks lined up in front of Donnie Harrell, the tailback. Cottle fakes it into Harrell and pitches it back to Jeremiah Blunt, I believe that is. Number 32, Jeremiah Blunt, the freshman out of Mariana, Florida, had West Georgia food. Jeremiah Blunt, another freshman tailback who came on the came around the left end and was knocked out of bounds down just inside the three-yard line. So it's third and goal for the Blazers at the West Georgia three. You know, Coach Mike Kevin wants BSC to stick the ball into the end zone on this play so we don't have to think about a field goal. It would be a shame to drive this far and end up having to kick a field. O'Connell rolls to his right, beats it on the outside, steps into the end zone, and he scores. Cottle on a sneak. Saw a little opening there on the inside. Looked like he wanted to go outside. Saw an opening inside, took it, and was able to power his way in. Weren't sure how much speed Ty Cottle, the freshman quarterback out of Tiff County High School, had, but he came out on a sweep, option sweep to the right that play. Saw an opening, cut inside of it, and just did get into the end zone. That's Ty Cottle's first touchdown in his foul out the state college history. That's got to give Cottle a lot of confidence going into the rest of this game. Rodney Fogg with the extra point. It's up and it's good. And with nine minutes, nine seconds left in the first quarter, about off the state college is driven. 75 yards for a touchdown in DSC 7. West Georgia nothing. We'll be back after this 60 second local break. This is the Blazers Sports Network. We're getting an education. You're getting great television. From the Department of Communication Arts at Valdosta State College, we're BSC TV. Cutting across the center. I believe that was 
Sammy Strozier, who made, or no, Tim Gladden, who made the reception down at the Valdosta State College 20, so a 14-yard gain for West Georgia on a first and 10 at Valdosta State College 14. Actually, they marked the ball just outside the 19, so we'll call it first and 10 at the 19-yard line for West Georgia. In two plays, they've come all the way down the field. They've moved 50 yards in two plays. Parker this time takes the ball, steps back, throws to the near corner, he has a man open and just can't quite get it to him. He was going for John Strickland on an out pattern down inside the five-yard line. The pass was just a little bit too long. Strickland unable to catch up with it as Michael Lovejoy was there on the coverage for Valdosta State College. Strickland had a step on him, but Parker unable to make the play. West Georgia returns their the kickoff to the 24-yard line. They're sitting right now on the Valdosta State College 19. They've run three phase plays. The last one was an incomplete pass. DSC comes out with its four-man line, shifts over a little bit to the left. West Georgia stays in the eye back. This time they pitch it back to Stevie Young, the running back, and he is met in the backfield by Valdosta State College's Fitzgerald Williams, the safety coming up here to throw. Stevie Young for about a yard and a half loss. They try to run the power sweep to the near side, going to their right. South Austin State College defensive line strung it out. Fitzgerald Williams, the safety, comes up and makes the tackle on Stevie Young for a loss of about two yards. Big play there, too, by Eric Faulkner. He was the first one through the line and forced Stevie Jones to go around in. And, uh, of course, that allowed Fitzgerald Williams to bring him down in the backfield. Third down 11 for West Georgia at the Valdosta State College 21. Seven minutes, 30 seconds to play in the first period. Barker this time drops straight back, throws a little hook pattern, and it's incomplete. He was trying to go to Nick, Nick, Nick Neal. The split end coming across the middle on a post pattern. The ball was just a little bit low. It looks like Neal slipped down a little bit there. I don't believe the field is, is wet. We haven't had any, uh, any rain here in South Georgia the entire month of October. But there was a high school football game played here last night. Uh, of course, Cleveland Field is the home for the Valdosta High Wildcats. Last night they beat Moultrie 35 to nothing, or Cockwood County 35 to nothing. So West Georgia elects to go with a place kick. Ed Hall in to make the attempt. The ball is up. And it is wide, apparently, to the right. So West Georgia, two plays, marches down the field. Valdosta State College's defense stiffens. The Braves miss. 43-yard field goal. Valdosta State College takes over on down first to 10 at their own 20-yard line. Federal has to give a lot of confidence to this defense. They were uh, broken early for two big plays, but then they hunt it down and was able to stop West Georgia and prevent the field goal, and uh, that has to give them a real good feeling. They a little bit of Troy State moving the ball on the Blazers last year. Last two weeks ago so well. The BSC takes it back first and 10. The ball on the 20-yard line. Kyle picks it back to Donnie Hill coming to the near side. Donnie cuts it back going to the far side. by Donnie Hell, the fail, junior tailback out of Middleburg High School in Middleburg, Florida. Going on the pitch sweep to the near side, saw that the traffic lanes were jammed up, cut it back to the far side, just reversed his deal, and made a gain of seven yards on a nice run. That's a sign of a real good runner that can make some yards out of nothing. Uh, he was stopped on the near side, but was able to change around and use his speed to get out. We saw Titus Dixon, the fine uh, blinker for Troy State, do that two weeks ago. Second three for Valdosta State College. Kyle drops back again. Hit out long. Randy Fields jumped off the field to fingertips. That's Randy Fisher's fingertips down at the 35-yard line. Kyle that time put the ball right on the money. Randy Fisher couldn't quite bring it in as Kyle threw that pass 45 yards, 50 yards in the air and had it right on the money. Fine pass by the freshman out of Tiff County High School going on the fly pattern for Randy Fisher on the near sideline. That's the kind of play you've got to run on third, second, and three, though, and try to break something loose. Good play. He had the, he had the completion. Uh, Fisher unable to make a thing. That'll come back. I think they'll connect on that one later. Fields come to the near side. Fisher to the far side. The back stay in the eye on third and three at the Valdosta State College 28. Connell pitches it back to Donnie Harrell going on the far side, and Donnie has nowhere to go. West Georgia really jammed that one up. They've seen the film the Valdosta State College is tossed sweet. And they diagnosed that one perfectly. Had five players out there to meet Donnie Harrell. No gain on the play, and it will bring up a fourth and three for Valdosta State College 
at their own 28-yard line. The Blazers send in the punting unit and number 12, Greg Jordan, freshman out of Bluntstown, Florida, stands back on his own 12-yard line. This is his first punt. Snap is back. Jordan gets the kick off. It's a spiral that's coming down to the 43-yard line where it's three bound off the State College Blazers around the West Georgia punt return. Clifford Scott and Evan Watkins got down there quickly and uh, put the coverage on the returner and put him down real early. Not a very long punt for about off the State College, but no return for West Georgia as VSC's special units covered the play very, very well. First and 10 for West Georgia on their own 43-yard line. The Braves come out with no huddle. They've called the play on the sideline. Come back and line up in the one back set. They have two men in the slots. The flanker split far to the wide side. Bound off the State College in a four-man line. West Georgia hands it off to the fullback this time. And Adams going off the left-hand side. And he's got about two yards before he's met in there by Darrell Tarver. Along with, uh, I believe, Rod Calloway. Right side for the Blazers defensive line. Tarver, number 44 out of Seal, Alabama. Rod Calloway, freshman out of... Clark Central in Athens. The gain is three yard lines up across the 45 to the 46 yard line. Second and seven for West Georgia. Five minutes, 16 seconds to play in the first period here at Cleveland Field in Valdosta. D.B. Young this time goes over the left hand side and four Valdosta State College Blazers are there to put the stop on D.B. Young after a gain of only about two, two and a half yards. Getting up off the bottom of the pile is Jimmy Brookins. And Scott Mary, Valdosta State College's two inside linebackers, along with Rod Calloway and Maurice Jordan in there now. Another big play here for West Georgia. Third down to four. Unable to convert last time. They need to get some moving here in order to get this defense off guard. West Georgia on their own side of the 50-yard line. They stay in that one back set. Baker is under center. VSC in a four-man line. Baker takes the ball, drops back, throws a little three and a half down. Rogers got a big hand up there and knocked it away as Barker was trying to go with a screen pass on the far side to the flanker back. Not off the State College, read the play very well. Callaway with the penetration and knocks it down. It brings up a fourth down and four for the Braves right at midfield. They drop into punt formation with Lilly standing back on his own 35. He gets the punt off and drives down, hits at the 17 and is going to roll dead inside about off the State College's 10-yard line. The ball is down at the seventh. So the defense, once again, for about off the State College holds West Georgia. Big play on third down as Rob Callaway got his hand in there and batted down the pass. Valdosta the State will take over on offense again. And uh, West Georgia unable to really get any yards except for those first two big plays to start off their offensive drives. So it's first and 10 for VSC inside their own 10 yard line. The ball marked on the eight. The Blazers come out with Darian Teals on the near side. Randy Fisher flanked to the far side, the backs in the eye formation. And Ty Cottle pitches it back to Donnie Harrell on the pitch sweep to the left on the near side. And Donnie gets two up to the 10 yard line before West Georgia closes in to make the stop. A gain of two for Donnie Harrell. Right now, Harold's got eight carries for 30 yards, so he's halfway halfway to his uh, goal of getting at least 60 yards. That puts Donnie over the 1,100-yard mark for his career at Valdosta State College. He came into today's game with 304 yards on 70 carries for the season. Yes, he stays in the I formation. Fisher on the far side, Seals on the near side. A little hitch pattern to Randy Fisher. He's across the 10 to 15. Run out of bounds, finally, up close to the... 20-yard line, I believe it's going to be marked on the 19, but Valdosta State College has a first down on the completion from Ty Cottle to Randy Fisher on just a little hitch pattern where Cottle takes a step back and throws it quickly to Randy Fisher, who is faked the start, pulled up and stopped. So far, VSC used that play three times to Randy Fisher, and they've gained 33 yards, so 11-yard average. That's not too bad for a little quick out. Three out of three on the hitch pattern, which we did not use a single time against Troy State. On first and ten, Eric Clark blasts over the left-hand side for five, almost six yards, as the fullback from Brunswick powers his way across the 25. Well, let's know they're going to mark.
mark it on the 25 yard line. But a gain of six yards without out to State College. And West Georgia has a man down on the field with an injury. With time out on the field, let's take a 60 second local break. This is the Blazers Sports Network. VSC students working to bring you better local programming in the area of sports, arts, and information. Thanks for joining us. We're VSC TV. Is the holder. The ball is going to be 
spotted on the 10. The snap's back down. The kick is up, and the kick is good. So Valdosta State College, with a minute 33 seconds now to play in the first period, is up on West Georgia, 14 to nothing. Let's take 60 seconds for a word from our local sponsors. This is the Blazers Sports Network. College 
has jumped in front in homecoming. 14 to nothing on the West Georgia Braves. Let's take 30 seconds for this word from our local sponsors. This is the Blazers Sports Network. State College, we're VSC TV. Back at Cleveland 
field in Valdosta where the West Georgia Braves get on the scoreboard against Valdosta State College on a 33-yard pass from quarterback Dave Barker to Nick Neal, the split end just over the fingertips of Calvin Orr from Valdosta State College. The Blazers still lead 14-7 with 12.54 to play in the first half. Jeremiah Blunt, Clifford Scott lined up for the Blazers on the kickoff. Jeremiah Blunt takes it in the end zone and downs it. Good thinking by the freshman from Mariana, Florida to down the ball in the end zone on the kickoff. So the Blazers will take over with the offense trotting onto the field. First and 10 on their own 20-yard line. DSU has moved the ball very well on offense so far today. You know, coming into this drive, Ty Cottle is 6 of 7 for 94 yards. Not bad stats for a freshman that needs to get some experience. So that gives him a lot of confidence. And uh, he's really doing a fine job out there. Cottle, the freshman from Tiff County High School out of Ty Ty, Georgia, and his first start as a Valdosta State College Blazer, came into the game having seen only limited action so far this, this season. Blazers line up, send Donnie Harrell in motion to the near side and hand it off to Eric Clark, the fullback, going right over the middle. Clark has four yards out to the 24-yard line. A nice game that time for Eric Clark running behind the Valdosta State College offensive line, which shows Buddy Phillips in at left guard, Brian Banks the center, Jimmy Holton, the big senior, 6'1", 271 pounds out of Bainbridge at the right guard, and John Norris, 77 out of Motry at the tackles. Blazers this time with Fisher and Teals to the far sides and Harold into motion and going for the tight end. That time Ty Cottle was looking to hit the uh, tight end, Howard Akers, over the middle. The ball bounced off of a West Georgia defender high into the air. One of the brave defensive backs went for the interception and the ball just fell to the ground, fortunately, for Valdosta State College or West Georgia would have been set up in that and fine situation to tie this ball game up. Very fortunate for VSC is uh, Kyle tried to thread the needle. Looks like he might have forced that pass someplace that he didn't have any place to throw it. He didn't have much of an opening. Third and six for the Blazers. Their own 24-yard line. Kyle this time drops straight back, looks over the middle, and completes this time to Howard Akers up across the 35 to the 38-yard line. First down, Valdosta State College. Howard Akers, the transfer from Panama City 6'1", 190-pound junior, makes the reception. That's Akers' seventh pass reception this year for Valdosta State College. He came in with six completions so far this year for 82 yards, averaging 13.7 yards per catch. And the Blazers have it first and 10 on their own 38-yard line. Kyle rolls to his right, hands it off to Donnie Harrell, rolling back over to the left side, and Harrell is up just to the 40-yard line where he's going to be marked down after a gain of two and a half yards. Blazers sprint out to the right, hand it back to Donnie Harrell going off the left side on a little trap play, and Donnie only gets about two and a half, they'll call it three yards, where it's second down and seven to go for the Blazers at their own 40-yard line. DSC in red jerseys, red helmets, and gray pants. West Georgia decked out in all white with the red helmets. Cottle this time fakes to Donnie Harrell and completes the screen pass out to Randy Fisher on the far side. There is a flag down on the play. There's a fumble also. Let's see who gets the ball. Randy Fisher on the screen pass to the far side had two blockers in front of him and crossed the 50-yard line down to about the West Georgia 46. There's a fumble on the play, but there's also a flag on the play. We don't know yet who recovered the pass, who recovered the fumble. It appears West Georgia did. And it also appears the penalty is against Valdosta State College, which gives the ball to West Georgia close to midfield. Randy Fisher just did not put the ball away after making the reception on the, on the screen pass. And the Blazers turn the ball over to West Georgia. The Braves have it first and 10, their own 47-yard line, 11 minutes, 14 seconds to play in the first half. Valdosta State College on top, 14 to nothing. Parker goes back, fakes the pass, hands off on a little Statue of Liberty play almost to Stevie Young, the fine tailback from West Georgia who's had an outstanding career for the Braves. He comes up across the 50 to the 45-yard line of Valdosta State College, a gain of almost eight yards, and it's going to bring up a second two for West Georgia. Big turnover there. VSC had some momentum at 14-0. At 14 to nothing, West Georgia came back with a big score, and now they've got the ball in good field position. So VSC's defense is going to have to 
bear down here and try to change the tide. Second and two for West Georgia at the 45-yard line. Two running backs, sort of a pro set for West Georgia. Parker looks over the defense, takes three steps back, and now he's under pressure from about off the State College. Maurice Jordan in there to chase him out of the pocket. Parker comes up just across the 45-yard line for a gain of just over a half yard before Valdosta State closes in on him. Darrell Tarver in on that stop. And it's going to be third down and a long one yard for the Braves with exactly 10 minutes to play in the first half. Good pass rush there by VSC. Uh, their defensive backs able to keep the receivers in check. Maurice Jordan and Rod Calloway flying pressure that time on Dave Barker. Blazers, four-man defensive line, four linebackers. And West Georgia hands the ball off inside to the fullback, Brooks Benton. He comes down to the 40-yard line and has a first down for West Georgia. First and 10, West Georgia at the Valdosta State College 40-yard line. The Blazers in front, 14 to 7. Nine minutes, 42 seconds left to play in the first half. The clock is running. Defensive captain Jimmy Brookins looks over to defensive coordinator Rusty Russell on the near sideline to get the defensive signals. Blazers still have their first team defensive unit in there. Maurice Jordan, Rod Calloway, the tackles, Eric Faulkner, and Darrell Tarver, the split ends, the uh, defensive ends. West Georgia lines up in an eye formation, pitches it back this time to the running back who is down across the 35 and finally chased out of bounds around the 32-yard line. Emmett Watkins came up from his linebacking position to make the tackle. The running back that time just put a little move on Emmett, went right around him, left Emmett standing in his wake. Gains eight yards, and is there a flag on the play? No, there was an uh, injury. They took time to slight injury to one of the West Georgia players. I don't see anybody down on the field, but number 55, let's check who that is, Brian Lee, the right tackle, six foot four, 284 pound freshman, goes off under his own power, so the injury must not be too severe. The Braves sitting in Valdosta State College territory down at the 32 yard line now, second and two. Valdosta State up only 14 and seven now on the West Georgia Braves. This time it's Benton coming back on a little counter play to the right side, and Benton has the first down for West Georgia as he reaches the 30-yard line before Valdosta State College makes the stop. West Georgia's now being able to do what VSC did. That's that balanced attack. Their ground game is really starting to pick up. That's going to open up their uh, passing game a little bit more, and, of course, we already know that Barker has done very well thus far. Coach Mike Cavan on the sidelines, facing back and forth, trying to figure out a way to stop these West Georgia Braves and score here would put them right back in the ball game and give them a lot of confidence. First and 10 for West Georgia at the VSC 30-yard line. Parker looks over, takes the snap, throws to his left, throws, and it's almost intercepted there by Emmett Watkins. Coverage by Calvin Orr as Parker that time tried to hit Mark Jones, 5'8", 172-pound freshman on a little out pattern to the near side. Ball off his fingertips. And it will bring up a second and 10 for the Braves at the VSC. 30 yard line, eight minutes, 40 seconds to play VSC on top, 14 to seven. Defense for the Blazers or in the cornerback on the near side, Fitzgerald Williams to safety. Michael Lovejoy lined up on the far side as the Braves come up in a two back set split out of the I formation and Barker completes down inside the Valdosta State College 15 yard line to his split in out there, the flanker. Bobby Booker was unable to keep up with him as uh, Barker just threw it right by him. And a completed pass and big plays. Goes first down for West Georgia. Barker is putting his passes right on the money so far today. West Georgia. It's first and ten now for the Braves at the Valdosta State College 15-yard line. Tell you what, for a game that's had, that uh, features two freshman quarterbacks, this game looks everything but. West Georgia in an I formation. The handoff to Stevie Young. Stevie Young comes up across the 15, down about the 14-yard line before he's finally stopped in there by Bobby Booker for Valdosta State College. A 
along with uh, trying to check out who the other player is in there for VSC. I think so is 61 on my roster right now. Mike's, no, I wouldn't be Mike Sellers. Mike Sellers, offensive player. I have read it wrong. 60, Bert Gillis, in on the, help to make the stop. Gain of five, second five for the Braves at the Valdosta State College 10 yard line. As the toss back to Stevie Young coming on the near side, he is tripped up just as he gets to the 10 yard line. Bert Gillis that time, number 60, a junior out of Palatka, Florida, six foot three, 235 pounds, knifed his way through the West Georgia offensive line, got a hand on Stevie Young and tripped him up. Back at the 12, Young falls forward to the 9 for a gain of 1. That's going to be third down and 4 for, for West Georgia at the Valdosta State College 8-yard line. Good play there by Gellis. He was on the ground. He was able to get his hand out and trip him up, and that's when Darrell Tarver came in and made the play. Gellis stepping in at the, at the defensive right tackle position. Blazers shifting around on defense, trying to confuse West Georgia as Parker takes the ball, drops straight back, close to Stevie Young, right over the middle on a little dink pass, and Young drags three bound off the State College defenders into the end zone for a touchdown, an eight-yard touchdown from Parker to Stevie Young, and West Georgia is right back in this ball game, 14 to 13. We've got six minutes and 41 seconds left to play in the first half. And you know, Coach Mike Kevin cannot be happy about what he's seeing happen out there as the Blazers go up 14 to nothing. West Georgia comes back and answers with two touchdowns. The extra point here is up. There is a flag down. The snap was back, and West Georgia is going to be penalized five yards for a legal procedure on the extra point try. So they will mark it off from the three back to the eight yard line. Well, West Georgia is going to have to try the extra point again. Disappointing thing for Kevin here has to be the fumble by Randy Fisher. VSC was moving the ball very well, but Fisher unable to hold on to the ball. West Georgia capitalized on the turnover, and we're back to 14 14. Or, well, it would be 14 14 if he converts here. Has the snap back on the extra point. It's down, it's up, and the kick is good. And we have a tie football game, 14 to 14, with six minutes and 41 seconds to play in the first half at Valdosta State College homecoming, where the Blazers find themselves tied with West Georgia. Let's take 60 seconds for this message from our local sponsors. This is the Blazers Sports Network. Field has gotten a little quiet. 
Not too much cheering going on right now as the folks are sitting back wondering what's happened as the Blazers went up 14 to nothing, only to have West Georgia come back with two touchdowns to tie the score. VSC came into the game expecting a big win. Connell this time keeps it on a fake. He comes up across the 40 and just slips down as he's trying to make a cut. Connell faked the pitch out going to the far side, came out on the near side on a naked play almost with only Jimmy Holton, number 76, the big 270-pound senior guard who pulled out in front of him to clear the way. Connell comes across the 40 and tries to make a cutback into the open field and just slip down. It's fortunate for VSC when Connell put his foot down trying to make that cut, his leg kind of did a little twist. Uh, fortunate that no knee or ankle popped in that play. But uh, it definitely did not look right the way Cotto planted his foot. Blazers at the 41-yard line with a third down and one. 5.26 to play in the first half. In a power formation, Cotto fakes this time into the middle and dives up across the 42 to the 43-yard line for a first down. Bound off the State College. He had Donnie Harrow trailing him for the pitch back. Cotto saw a little opening. Gets the first down as he crosses the 42 to the 43. First down, Bound off the State College their own 43-yard line, the clock ticking down to 5-10 and running back again as the stakes are set. Good option play there by Cotto. He had three backs. He had a chance to throw to. Saw a little opening. Took it himself for three yards in the first down. First and 10, BSC, their own 43-yard line. Randy Fisher to the near side. Darian Fields to the far side. The backs in the eye formation as Cotto hands off to Eric Clark, the fullback, diving into the middle across the 45, out to the 46-yard line of Valdosta State College. A gain of about four yards on the play for Eric Clark. We'll bring up a second down, and we'll call it seven to go, as Clark is just across the 45, almost to the 46-yard line. Blazers need to get the ball downfield a little further now, as the clock is down to four minutes and 23 seconds. Fisher and Teals both go to the far side. Cottle hands off to Donnie Harrell, who dances and jumps and twists and finds across the 45 to the West Georgia 42, 43-yard line. A nice run that time by Donnie Harrell. Ten yards on the carry as Donnie twisted and turned and jumped and danced and picks up ten yards. Donnie Harrell used every ounce of his athletic ability on that play. He did a lot of dancing and, and swinging and a big play there. We kid Donnie Harrell all the time because he's... The, the roster lists him as five foot seven. We think he's only about five foot five, though. We always tell him, stand up, Donnie. <laughs> but that time he stood up and gained 10 yards. Cottle going for Randy Fisher on an out pattern on the far side, and it's just off of Fisher's fingertips. That's the kind of pass you usually see Randy Fisher pull in, gather into his body, but just couldn't quite get more than a finger on it that time. So it's second and 10 for Valdosta State College at the West Georgia 43-yard line clock with three minutes and 55 seconds to play in the first period. I mean, in the first half is now stopped. Not us to State College 14, West Georgia 14. Fisher and Teals go to the far side. Donnie Harrell comes in motion to the right. Cottle rolls out, and it throws back and almost intercepted by West Georgia linebacker in there, number 68. Cottle that time tried to force one in, and Neil Gooch, who is a junior, Strong side linebacker, 6'1", 215 pounds, had it in his hands for West Georgia and just let it slip through or the Braves could have really put a damper on homecoming here today at Valdosta State College. Cottle was under a lot of pressure and he tried to throw that ball on the run and he was unable to get enough zip on it that he wanted to and uh, fortunately enough, uh, West Georgia unable to pull the ball in. Big play here for Valdosta State College, third down, 10. On the West Georgia 43, Fisher and Teals go to the far side. Akers split to the near side. Cottles hands it off of going up the middle to Eric Clark. And Eric only has one yard maybe as he's back down to the 43-yard line. No gain on the play that time for Eric Clark. So the Blazers are blunted by West Georgia. That's moving the ball down from their own 20 following the West Georgia kickoff into Braves territory. Blazers have stopped at the 43-yard line, and Greg Jordan, the freshman out of Blunstown, has to come in and punt. Jordan standing back on his own 41, gets the snap, and gets the kick off. It's a spiral kick that's going to come up short. A West Georgia man, Paul Boyd, drops the ball, and Paul off the 
Florida State College, I believe, has recovered inside the West Georgia 15 yard line. No, they gave oh. it back to West oh. Georgia. They gave it back to West Georgia, and I thought Mount Austin State College was on top of the ball. It looked to me like number 18, I'm not sure who that is, for BSC, had gotten down there and had made the recovery. Dwayne Hart, 5'7", 164-pound freshman out of Valdosta, looked like he had fallen on the ball after it was dropped by the West Georgia receiver. But the Braves fought for it and got it back and have the ball first and 10 on their own 13-yard line. A big break for Valdosta State College goes by the boards. The Braves come up, run Stevie Young, their fine tailback to the right side, and Young comes up across the 15 to about the 16-yard line for a gain of three. That would have been a very big break in this ball game for Valdosta State College had the Blazers been able to recover the fumbled punt. It's the spark I think Valdosta State's looking for, and unfortunately I guess they have to cause one in the second half as uh, they were just inches away from taking that ball away from West Georgia. We have 235 to play in the first half. The SC 14, West Georgia 14. Barker this time hands off to Stevie Young, and Stevie Young is met in the backfield by Maurice Jordan in there along with Rod Callaway. Rod off Callaway the ball. and Jimmy Brookins. He hit a wall on that play. Uh, great defensive line there for VSC as he just pushed it back for no gain. Actually, there's a loss on the play back to the 14-yard line, so a loss of two on the play. He's going to bring up a third and nine for the Braves on their own 14-yard line. Two minutes exactly to play in the first half. Valdosta State College 14, the West Georgia College Braves 14 here at Cleveland Field in Valdosta. Barker sends two men out to the near side. The wide side of the field has one running back set in there. He rolls to the left, the near side, throws it, and it is...
the kickoff comes up and hands off back to Neal, Nick Neal, on reverse going to the far side and bowed off to State College is Clifford Scott, I believe, number 28, read it perfectly and got the ball carrier for about a seven-yard loss Clifford, on the reverse. Clifford Scott was back there waiting for him, and uh, West Georgia fooled nobody on that play. They were trying to for a kind of a, just a last-ditch effort there, and about the State able to turn it around and give them a loss. First and 10 for the Braves at their own 10-yard line. Stevie Young comes up over the right-hand side and Valdosta State College is there to meet him. Emmett Watkins along with Maurice Jordan we see on the far side. And there's a timeout on the field. I'm not sure if Valdosta State College is taking time. Yes, Valdosta State College calls a timeout after a gain of only one yard on the play out to the 11 by Stevie Young. The Blazers look like they want to save a little bit of time on the clock to see if they can't get the ball back. They've got West Georgia pinned in on their own 11-yard line after a fine, fine stop on the kickoff return by Clifford Scott, the freshman out of Sneeds, Florida, who diagnosed the reverse perfectly and got the ball carrying Nick Neal for a loss after John Strickland had come up close to the 20-yard line. So the Blazers trying to save a little bit of time on the clock. Jimmy Brookins, defense captain, comes over to the near sideline to talk with Coach Rusty Russell, who is attired in his all-black outfit. Some guys are good guys, some guys are bad guys. Even though Coach Russell's in all-black, he's still one of the good guys. I think this is a smart move by Coach Kevin. A couple big defensive plays, and they could be in a nice field goal position or maybe one big play for another touchdown. And I think Valdosta State's got West Georgia a little bit on the run after that fine interception by Fitzgerald Williams. Coach Dave Napier defensive line coach and Peter Thurman, the defensive secondary for the coach for the Valdosta State College Blazers there along with Coach Rusty Russell, defensive coordinator for VSC, talking to the spotters up in the press box, the other defensive coaches, trying to figure out what West Georgia may do now with second and nine on their own 11-yard line, a minute and 15 seconds to play in the first half, Valdosta State College on top, 21 to 14. West Georgia comes out in an eye formation, hand off to the running back, fullback coming up in the middle. That's Brooks Benton, and he is close to the 14 where Valdosta State College takes another timeout. That's two timeouts for VSC. I'm not sure if they've used the one earlier. They may have one left as the gain of that time is only four yards, and it's going to bring up a third down and five for West Georgia on their own 15-yard line. Blazers are using all of their timeout while they've got timeout on the field. Let's take 30 seconds for this word from our local sponsors. This is the Blazers Sports Network. Valdosta State College Television, a division of the Department of Communication Arts and the School of the Arts, offering a variety of entertainment for every viewer. Stay tuned. We're VSC TV. Marietta. 
that has two yards out to the 27 yard line where it's going to be second and eight for West Georgia the clock down to 36 seconds, 35 seconds, 34 seconds running here as time is winding out in the first half. West Georgia this time comes up in a wishbone offense. Barker pitches it back to one of the tailbacks. He comes across the 30 out to the 33 yard line before Valdosta State College can make the stop. It's not a first down. He's actually about two yards short of the first down, and that may just well be the last play of the first half, which saw Valdosta State College jump out to an early 14 to nothing lead. Then West Georgia rallied to tie the score at 14 before Fitzgerald Williams steps in front of Dave Barker's pass, makes an interception, returns at about 25 yards to the one. Ty Connell takes over from there. And the Blazers are on top at halftime, 21 to 14. After this joy ride, I'm out of the crash dummy business for good. But Vince, it's a great job. Heck, they'd have to pry me away from it. Anybody home? Larry, they do pry you away from it. Oh, yeah. For years, I've been eating steering wheels. For what? To prove how safety belts save lives. But thousands die every year in car accidents because they don't buckle up. Vince, we're dummies. We don't wear safety belts. Larry, you really know how to hurt a guy. Hit it! Yeah! You could learn a lot from a dummy. Buckle your safety belt. That's it. I'm history. End of the road. You can't quit, Vince. No crash dummy takes out a utility pole like you do. Larry, for years I've been proving how safety belts save lives, but nobody's listening. Sure they are. Yeah, that's why thousands die in car accidents every year. I feel like I'm banging my head against the wall. Come on, Vince. Tomorrow's the big day. Two compacts. Head on. High speed? Could save a life. I'll be there. <laughs> yeah. You could learn a lot from a dummy. Buckle your safety belt.
For today's homecoming show, the Blazing Brigade presents its Top 40 show featuring the BSC Dance Line, Flag Corps, and Majorette. Our first selection is Whitney Houston, I Want to Dance with Somebody. section is featured next with Boogie Down. all VFC students and alumni. We hope you enjoy the dance line, flags, and majorettes as the band plays Miami Sound Machine's Rhythm is Gonna Get You.
Let's have another big round of applause for the Blazing Brigade, the dance line, the flag court, and the majorettes. And now, ladies and gentlemen, would you please rise and join the Blazing Brigade as the 1987 homecoming ceremonies begin with the BSC alma mater. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Homecoming 87, our future is so bright. Now we would like to recognize the 1987 Homecoming candidates announced in alphabetical order. Miss Kelly Crawford, sponsored by Kappa Delta and escorted by Mr. Tony Chavis. Miss Kim Culpepper, sponsored by Theta Xi and escorted by Mr. Dwayne Culpepper. Miss Lisey Davis, sponsored by Alpha Delta Pi and Kappa Alpha, escorted by Mr. Jeff Davis. Ms. Kay Green, sponsored by the VSC Ambassadors and escorted by Mr. Foster Turner. Ms. Stacy Hogabrook, sponsored by the P-Boys and escorted by Mr. Wesley Pitts. Ms. Selena Hightower is sponsored by the Baptist Student Union and escorted by Mr. Todd Hightower. Ms. Connie Conard is sponsored by the Campus Activities Board and escorted by Mr. Kelly Stites. Ms. Lisa Lahr is sponsored by Chi Omega and escorted by Mr. Ashley Abrams. Ms. Kelly McCook is sponsored by Fine U and escorted by Mr. Joy Sullivan. Ms. Angie Patrick is sponsored by Sigma Alpha Epsilon and escorted by Mr. Robert Patrick. Ms. Amy Rigsby is sponsored by Fine U Alpha and escorted by Mr. John Havens. Ms. Robin Swanson is sponsored by Angel Flight and escorted by Mr. Glenn Brett. Ms. Lynn Tarpley is sponsored by the Art Students League and escorted by Mr. Brad Williams. Ms. Mary Angela Tate is sponsored by the Black Student League and escorted by Mr. Todd C. Faulkner. Ms. Sharon Williams is sponsored by Zeta Tau Alpha and escorted by Mr. Hayward Hackney. The homecoming court was voted on by the student body on Tuesday of this week. The court consists of the five girls receiving the most votes during the election. Flowers will be presented to the homecoming court by Reeves West, Student Government Association representative. The 1987 homecoming court in alphabetical order is as follows. Ms. Kelly Crawford. Ms. Kay Green. Ms. Kelly McCook. Ms. Amy Rigsby. and Miss Mary Tate.
On Thursday of this week, the student body selected a homecoming queen from the court. And now we present the 1987 homecoming queen, Miss Mary Angela Tate. The queen will be crowned by Valdosta State College President UC Bailey. She will be presented roses by Miss Karen Dupac, the Valdosta State College homecoming queen, 1986. Friday of this week, a homecoming banner contest was held. The winners of the contest are as follows. Third place, Chi Omega Sorority. Second place, Brown Hall. And first place goes to 80 Pi Sorority. Judging was also held this week for the best lawn display in participating fraternity houses. The winner is Kappa Alpha. This morning, the annual homecoming parade was held Winners for the float competition are third place, Zeta Tau Alpha. Second place, VSC Bookstore. The winner this morning, Kappa Delta Sorority. Trophies for the homecoming parade were donated by the VSC Alumni Association. Winners of the above contest may pick up their trophies and plaques in the Student Activities Office upstairs in the Union. Also this week, the 80 Pi Sorority held their flame game. The winners have just been announced. Second place goes to Chris Baker, winner of a microwave oven. First place goes to Rick Rupp, winner of a color TV. Gift certificates are awarded to all participants. You can pick up your prizes Monday after 6 p.m. at Lee Office Supply. they've never had before in their six-year history is an off week during the season. They've always played 11 consecutive weeks. Third and 10, Kyle steps back to pass, tucks the ball under and runs. He's out across the 20 to the 24-yard line where he is finally upended by a Troy State defensive lineman, Mark Chipman, 6'3", 255-pound sophomore out of Arcadia, Florida, gave Ty Collel a flip that time as Ty was trying to run something like a quarterback draw. 
did not get the pass off. It's been dropping back to pass. Receivers were covered, so he just tucks it under. And gets four yards out to the 24-yard line, where it's fourth and six for the Blazers. Michael Maddox comes in to punt. Snap is back. Maddox gets a wobbly kickoff. It comes up and hits at the 45 and is taken there by a Troy State defender at the 35. He's back up across the 42 the VS, to the Troy State 45-yard line before two VSC players get to him. That's Keith Miles, defensive end, high school in Douglas, along with Andy Clack, a freshman linebacker, 6'1", 200 pounds, out of Abbeville, Georgia. Valdosta State College has so many freshmen who are dressing out for these games. Coach Kevin only has eight seniors on the squad. The Blazers have 24 freshmen dressed out. Troy State has first and 10 at the, their own 45-yard line, four minutes, 50 seconds left to play. New quarterback in for Troy State this time. That's Tom, Tony Wadston, W-A-S-D-E-N, who is a senior out of Selma, Alabama. Tony has been around to play in the shadows of senior quarterback Mike Turk, the all Gulf South Conference performer for four years. Got some hands off, and Trojans gained about three yards on the play, bringing up second seven on their own 48. Marston, the quarterback now, looks and gives to the fullback, coming off the right-hand side. He crosses the 50 down to the VSC 46-yard line, a gain of about six yards on that carry, and Troy State's going to be looking at a third and one at the Valdosta State College 46 as the clock goes under four minutes left to play in the game, 3.54, 3.53 and counting. A very tired Valdosta State College defensive unit out there now. A lot of freshmen in at the present time for Valdosta State College. We see Charles Reddick in playing at uh, one position. Also in for Valdosta State College is Paul Simmons in a defensive line play. Troy State goes with one of the halfbacks, Freddie Taylor, going off the left-hand side. Taylor breaks it down across the 40, across the 35 to the Valdosta State College 30-yard line for another first down. The clock stopped momentarily to reset the chains. So many freshmen in there right now for Valdosta State College. Danny Medcalf, Tony Murphy, both freshmen in at linebackers. Michael Lovejoy, a sophomore in at safety. Deion Searcy and... Clifford Scott, two freshmen in at the cornerbacks. Roger Copeland from Athens, Georgia, in at the linebacker position, along with Bert Gellis, who is a junior, playing at a defensive end position. Watson this time hands off to Jimbo Payne, one of the fullbacks, going right up the middle. And Payne has three yards down to the Valdosta State College, 27. It's going to bring up the second down in seven with two minutes and 54 seconds left to play. I would say right now, VSC has seven, perhaps eight freshmen out on defense. Also in there, Darrell Wright, a freshman out of Brunswick at a defensive end position. Second seven for Troy State. They run the fullback into the middle again. No gain this time. Mayo, maybe one yard line. One yard down to the 26 yard line. As the clock click ticks down to two minutes and 23, two minutes and 22 seconds to play. Troy State on top, 44 to seven. Valdosta State College's 10 game winning streak. The longest winning current winning streak in the Gulf South Conference. The longest current winning streak of any team playing football in the state of Georgia. The longest current winning streak, we believe, in the Division II of the NCAA, about to come to an end. As Wiseman hands off to the fullback going over the middle for a gain of about four yards down inside the Valdosta State College, 25 to the 22. He's going to be short of the first down. It's about, about a full yard short. So it'll be fourth and one for Troy State. At the VSC, 22 is the clock down now to a minute and 37 seconds to play in the contest. Both teams worn out. Troy State's offense has been on the field a long time today, of course. When you score 44 points, you don't get as tired as when you give up 44 points. 
Wiseman hands off to Freddie Taylor, who dances around the right, the left tackle position, across the 20 down to the 17, and picks up another Troy State first down. We need to just go ahead and run the clock out and put VSC out of the misery in this one, get this one behind us, and the Blazers can turn their attention now to West Georgia. West Georgia will be the next opponent for Valhalla State College. And the Braves will come to Cleveland Field two weeks from today on Saturday, October the 24th for the homecoming game, 2 p.m. at Cleveland Field. This will be the first time West Georgia has ever played Valdosta State College in Valdosta. The two teams have met four previous times. The first three were in the Riverbend Classic in Columbus, Georgia, when Valdosta State College won all three. Last year, the Blazers went up to Carrollton and played West Georgia in Carrollton, coming away with a big victory, 49 to 24. So next week, West Georgia, uh, two weeks from today, West Georgia comes to town. 20 seconds left in the contest. Watson just runs a little quarterback sneak, gets down across the 15, as the clock ticks down to 12 seconds left, and that will probably be the last play in today's game. Troy State doesn't want to run up any more yardage. Coach Mike Cannon runs across the field to meet Coach Rick Rose and congratulate him on the victory, which is Troy State 44, South Austin State College 7. We'll be back to wrap it up after this 90 second local break. This is the Blazers Sports Network. If you want a car that can last, Subaru is for you. Pipkins Motors is having a special. All 1997 four-door wagons, sport coupes, just $199 over cost. That's right, just $199 over cost. Subaru, inexpensive and built to stay that way. This special deal on all 1987 wagons will only last until October the 12th. That's right, October the 12th. The price includes a free five-year warranty or 50,000 miles. Hurry in and check out the Subarus. Call David at 242-9920 today. At L&D Lawn and Garden Equipment Center, we're having the sale you've been waiting for. Our year-end clearance is happening now at L&D. We're closing out our remaining 1987 inventory at 5% over dealer cost. Honda, Toro, and Yazoo, all at unbelievable savings. Never before have we offered this kind of quality, number one rated riders, lawnmowers, trimmers, and all of your lawn and garden needs at these sensational closeout prices. Come now to L&D Lawn and Garden Equipment Center at 1817 West Gordon Street and beat the new price increases. That's L&D. Lawn and Garden Equipment Center. This fall, make sure you're getting the job done right. Make sure you're making the most of your time and money at Mackey Lumber Company. Yes, season after season, Mackey Lumber on West Savannah Avenue has been delivering the best building materials to Valdosta and Lowndes County. The reason? We're winners, too. We make it a point to not only offer good materials, but professional help and assistance. We know our merchandise. Mackey Lumber Company.
are back on the field. We're getting ready for the second half, and we'll be back with the second half kickoff after this 30-second local break. This is the Blazers Sports Network. At L&D Lawn and Garden Equipment Center, we're having the sale you've been waiting for. Our year-end clearance is happening now at L&D. We're closing out our remaining 1987 inventory at 5% over dealer cost. Honda, Toro, and Yazoo, all at unbelievable savings. Never before have we offered this kind of quality, number one rated riders, lawnmowers, trimmers, and all of your lawn and garden needs at these sensational closeout prices. Come now to L&D Lawn and Garden Equipment Center at 1817 West Gordon Street and beat the new price increases. That's L and D Lawn and Garden Equipment Center. Cleveland Field in Mount Austin, Georgia, where it looks like a thousand balloons are just going into the sky on the far sideline. I believe I heard the PA announcer said AD Pie had sponsored those balloons uh, to mark the homecoming festivities here at Mount Austin State College, where the Blazers are in front of West Georgia, 21 to 14. Rodney Folk set with the kickoff for the second half. He gets off a short kick, which is going to be taken by Neal at the 25-yard line. He's across the 30, up to the 40. One man can get him and finally does as he gets to the 45-yard line. That's Michael Lovejoy, the sophomore out of Central High of Thomasville, who had to step in and make the stop on the kickoff team. As Fultz's kick was short and was gathered in around the 20-yard line by Nick Neal, uh, who is a split in and has excellent speed for West Georgia. Neal came right up the middle before... Michael got in his way and stopped him at the 45-yard line. West Georgia takes the second half kickoff and comes out with excellent field position as Dave Barker brings his troops back onto the field for West Georgia. First and 10 just underway in the second half. West Georgia in its one-back formation, and Barker drops straight back to pass, and he's going long for a touchdown. There's a ball out Set the Blazers up 
at their own 41. They've come down to the West Georgia 32 where it's a first and 10. The backs are in an eye formation. Connell throws a little hitch pass to Randy Fisher who comes across the 30 down to the 27. He's being covered out there by a linebacker and the linebacker Bray, or the bandit in, they call him Braylon Hicks, who's a 227-pound junior, really can't stay with Randy Fisher, the 5'10", 169-pound sophomore out of Brunswick's Glen Academy, who has amazing speed that's really deceptive. Uh, Randy does not, not look like he's running, and before you know it, he's past you and five yards down the field. Second and six for VSC at the West Georgia 29-yard line. The back's in the eye formation. Donnie Harrell takes the pitch off. Comes across the 30 down to the 25, inside the 25, I think. Just inside the 25, the ball touching the 25-yard line. A gain of about four on that play. It's going to be third down and a short two for Valdosta State College. Inside the West Georgia 25, we'll call it the 24-yard line. Valdosta State's got that offense going now. They're using the rush to try to set up the pass. And, of course, with Donnie Hill and Eric Clark rushing in that backfield, that's very potent offensive running. The SC goes into its power formation with Jeremiah Blunt, the tailback at the back of the two three-man set. This time, Royal goes in motion. Blunt takes the pitch off. He's across the 20, dances down to the 15-yard line. First down, fouled off the State College. A 10-yard run on a third and two by Jeremiah Blunt. No, check that, Donnie Hill. That was Donnie Hill lined up at the, uh, at the back spot. So add 10 more yards to Donnie Harrell's rushing statistics for the afternoon. Today's 15 rushes, 78 yards, and he is just adding on to that list. And, of course, Donnie Harrell is a new all-time rusher for Valdosta State College. Harrell stays in at the tailback position. Two backs lined up in front of him. Royal comes in motion to the near side, and Harrell takes the pitch out once again. Has good blocking down across the 10-yard line. Fumble. He drops the ball, but why is he down? The referee says no. And West Georgia College has recovered a fumble inside their own 10-yard line. The ball should have been marked down back here at the 10 where Donnie Harrell went down. The referees are talking about it. Now they give it to West Georgia. Oh, can you believe that? I disagree with that. Uh, it looked like uh, Donnie Harrell was definitely down. He had a knee touching the ground. And as he was falling on his knees, that's when the ball came loose. But uh, the whistle should have been blown by that time. So Valdosta State College with an excellent drive from their own 41 after Michael, after... Uh, the interception by Calvin Orr. The Blazers bring it down to the West Georgia eight-yard line where Donnie Harrell's down. The ball comes flying loose, and West Georgia recovers. It's time for the defense to get it back for VSC. 21-14, we have 11-23 to play in the third period. Valdosta State College on top. Handoff goes to the tailback who tries to come up and has no place to go as... DSC senior Eric Falk, number, number 92, 214-pound senior, played at East Hall High School in Gainesville, Georgia, grabs him by the leg. They're going to give him a gain of just over a yard on the play, so it's going to be a second and long eight for the Braves inside, just inside their own 10-yard line. Eric Faulkner plays defensive end. He's a senior for VSC. He was a preseason All-Gulf South Conference selection, and he is the president of the Valdosta State College student body. Second and eight for West Georgia inside their own 10-yard line. Barker this time pitches it back to Stevie Young. Stevie Young is going to be wrapped up by four of Valdosta State College Blazers. Jimmy Brookins, Eric Faulkner, and their Bobby Booker getting up off the bottom of the stack is Emmett Watkins, another senior for Valdosta State College. As they had Stevie Young surrounded, Young did come across the 10. He gains a yard and a half. It's going to be third down and a long seven for the Braves back on their own 11-yard line. Defense tighten up here, get the ball back for the offense. Great coverage there by the VSC defensive line. There was four men over there waiting for him, and they put him down without going any further, only a pickup of one, and here's a big third down play for West Georgia. West Georgia has had a lot of third down plays so far this afternoon. They have one back in the backfield. Everybody else is flanked out wide. Marker takes the ball, drops straight back. VSC comes with the pressure and the pass. The Young is just off his fingertips, out of bounds as he was running a little post pattern. If the completion had been made, it would have been two yards short of the first down. But the pass falls incomplete, and West Georgia is faced with a fourth and six on its own 11-yard line. Randy Fisher drops back into single coverage for Valdosta State College, expecting the punt return back on his own 50. Two Blazers, Michael Lovejoy and Calvin Orr, standing on the 40 in front of him as VSC is going for the return. The kick is off. It's a short kick, and a fair catch is called for on the far side. 
by Calvin Orr, and the flag is thrown at Calvin Orr's feet. I don't know why the flag was thrown. Calvin signaled for a fair catch, came up and made the reception, and stopped right there. This will be interesting. It didn't look like there was any contact made, and uh, Calvin Orr did not try to advance the football after calling the fair catch. Illegal procedure is going to be called against West Georgia. Apparently, the Braves may have had too many players on the field for the punt. Very odd the way the flag was thrown, though. It looked as if it was on the return, and... Well, they have... The officials have marked off five yards from where Calvin Orr got the fair punt on the fair catch. They marked off five yards from the 36 and put the ball down on the 31-yard line. I'm not sure what's going on with that. I don't know if I can explain that one either. That one... <laughs> And we're not sure actually why West Georgia was penalized for illegal procedure, but Valdosta State College has the ball first and 10 on the West Georgia 31-yard line. Nine minutes, 47 seconds to play in the third period. BSC on top 21 to 14 in an excellent position to put more points on the scoreboard. Eric Clark takes the handoff right over the middle, hits to the 25, spins down to the 20-yard line of West Georgia, a gain of 11 yards for Eric Clark, the junior fullback out of Brunswick. Nice hole opened up that time by the right side of the Valdosta State College offensive line. That's Jimmy, excuse me, that's 57 yards on 10 rushes for Eric Clark. Brian Banks, Jimmy Holt, and John Norris. Center, right guard, right tackle for Valdosta State College. Opening holes for the Blazers. High formation. Kyle pitches back to Jeremiah Blunt is in there. Jeremiah comes down across the 15, down to the 10-yard line. Gets a little reaction out of the crowd as he gains almost 10 yards on that carry. Down to the West Georgia 11-yard line is where the ball is marked. A gain of nine. It's going to be second down and one for the Blazers. Threatening deep in West Georgia's territory. DSC on top, only 21-14. Blazers had broken out to a 14-0 lead before West Georgia climbed back into the ball game. I'll tell you what, that attack of rushing offense of Eric Clark, Donnie Hill, and Jeremiah Blunt has really helped out VSC here, and, and uh, you cannot tell how much they've really helped this team out. High formation. Eric Clark right up the middle, inside the five, down to the two-yard line of West Georgia. First down, Valdosta State College on the West Georgia two-yard line. Eric Clark gains nine yards going over the middle, but there's a flag on the play. Illegal procedure called against Valdosta State College, so negate the nice nine-yard run by Eric Clark as VSC was in motion. Coach Mike Cabin standing down at the 22-yard line, not happy about the call. The referee comes over and tells Coach Cabin what the play was. He walks back to the sideline dejectedly. The ball's moved back to the 16-yard line, where it's going to be a second and six for the Blazers. 8.36 to play in the third period. DSC on top, 21 to 14. Offensive coordinator David McKnight down right at the corner of the coach's box there calling plays into Ty Cottle, the quarterback. Cottle this time runs a little reverse, ducks away from one man. He's got an open field. He's down to the 10, down to the 5, and then goes to the one yard line. Ty Cottle, a beautiful 15 yard run on a little naked reverse. It's inside deep inside West Georgia territory to the one-yard line. Ty Cottle almost had his third touchdown of the afternoon. He looked like a running back on that play. He did a lot of sidestepping and turning, and he was just inches away from breaking through, and he carried a couple guys down with him as he tried to burst through over the goal line. One of the most impressive things about Ty Cottle when he was playing quarterback at Tiff County High School last year was his ability to move around in the pocket. He has excellent quickness and agility back there. First and goal for the Blazers on the one. Ty Cottle sneaks in and scores for Valdosta State College. The Blazers go up 27 to 14 with eight minutes and three seconds to play in the third period. Give Ty Cottle his third touchdown of his young Valdosta State College career. Like you said, eluding the, the rush on that was the key to Ty Cottle making that run as he was being pursued there by West Georgia, and he just simply sidestepped him and uh, moved up in the pocket to pick up the big game. Rodney Falk comes in to add the extra point today. Cottle is the holder on the 10-yard line. Snap is back, the ball is down, the kick is up, and the kick is good. Out off the State College, 28, West Georgia 14. Let's take 60 seconds for this message from our local sponsors. This is the Blazers Sports Network. 
originating from the Department of Communication Arts at Valdosta State College. We're VSC TV, bringing you a wide variety of sports, arts, and information about your community. Stay tuned for more entertainment on VSC TV. Inside the 40 to about the 38-yard line for 
West Georgia. Notice tackle Brian Keith, number 55, a freshman for West Georgia, comes out of the pile limping, and he's still trying to shake off something that looks like an ankle or a knee bruise, possibly. West Georgia has four freshmen, three freshmen on that offensive line. Brian Lee, Henry Johnson, and Clay Gooch at guard and tackle. First and ten for the Braves at the VSC 38, 507 to play in the third period. Young comes in motion to the near side. The Blazers shift on defense. Marker drops back, has a little pressure. Now he throws deep for Stevie Young. And Michael Lovejoy was standing back there for Valdosta State College in the defensive secondary along with Fitzwilliams and Calvin Orr. And I think uh, Michael was surprised to see Stevie Young come that far down the field. And the ball come down there and was... Oh, did not react quite in time. He may have had an interception if he had looked up just a fraction of a second sooner. But the incompletion is going to bring up a second and ten for the Braves at the 38-yard line. 4.57 to play, third period. DSC on top, 28-14. Blazers showing a four-man defensive line. Barker rolls back, hands off to Brooks. The, uh, Benton, the, uh, Tailback on the far side on a little draw play. He gains six yards down inside the VSC 35. We'll call it the 31-yard line. It's going to bring up a third down and three. Give him seven yards on the carry to the 31. So another third down play for West Georgia. They've had a ton of them today. VSC carries the third down again, and VSC has done very well stopping the third down play for West Georgia. And uh, that's definitely helped out the defense. Blazers four-man defensive line, two backs in the backfield for West Georgia in a pro set. Marcus calling out signals, drops straight back, throws a little squeeze. sports, drama, and all-around entertainment. Student-produced and community-oriented programming at its best. You're watching VSC-TV. comes up to the 22-yard line. There's a flag on the play again. 
as the stop is made by John Royal. Number 35, I believe that's John Royal. Well, I'm not sure. It may not be John Royal. We'll have to check that number. Yeah, 35 is John Royal out of Douglas Coffee County High School where his father, Barnwell Royal, is the head coach for the Coffee County football team. And on the kickoff return, West Georgia is penalized for holding 10 yards. That puts the ball back on the 13-yard line. So the Braves are going to be starting off in a hole here in the third period. Three minutes, 48 seconds left to play. Bound off the State College on top, 35 to 14. We understand that Georgia has defeated Kentucky 17 to 14 up in Athens as Coach Vince Dooley comes back to the sideline after a little distraction with some heart problems earlier in the week. West Georgia runs a little counter play to the flanker back coming up through the middle on a trap. He gets up across the 15 to about the 19-yard line where it's going to be second down and about one. No, after the penalty, that's going to make a second down and about four yards to go for West Georgia. Right now we're seeing two teams and going in totally different directions. BSC is getting some spirited play and big turnovers. West Georgia seems to be mired in some kind of uh, dull play here. West Georgia has not shown a lot on offense so far this year, but they've looked fairly well against the Blazers. Parker throws a little screen pass to Larry Adams, the fullback. Adams comes up across the 25, almost to the 30-yard line for a first down for West Georgia. Adams has not been in the ball game for a while. They've been using Brooks Benton at the fullback slot. I don't know if the senior has had some kind of injury problem or what, but he takes the pass that time from the freshman quarterback Dave Barker, comes across the 25 out to the 30-yard line for a first down for the West Georgia Braves. Start off the State College on top, 35 to 14 on homecoming, and the alumni who come back to VSC faithful sort of happy this afternoon with the 21-point lead now. First and 10 West Georgia, their own 30-yard line, two backs in the backfield. Both other flankers split out, one wide to the right, one wide to the left. Parker drops straight back, throws across the middle. This time it's complete to his tight end, Jimmy Cooper, who is a 6'5", 233-pound sophomore. Out to the 40-yard line, the gain is going to be nine and a, nine yards and two feet going to bring up the second. We'll have to call it one, but he actually only has to go about a foot for the first down out to the 40-yard line. The freshman quarterback, Dave Barker, is not giving up, and he has definitely played very well this afternoon. Uh, other than the two interceptions for big plays, Dave Barker has led this team and uh, was on the verge of turning this game around. Well, Barker's not a slouch. He comes into this game fourth in the Gulf South Conference and passing statistics, averaging 11 and a half completions a game. This time he hands off to Adams coming off the right hand, left hand side. Adams has the first down as he gets out to about the 44 yard line before BSC's defensive line closes in there to make the stop. Scott Mowry gets up off the bottom of the stack along with Danny Metcalf, a freshman out of Wakulla High School. He plays, he's from Panacea, Florida. Danny is a 6'191 pound freshman. He's got two cousins who play football down there. One is a uh, sophomore this year at Florida A&M and is the leading defensive player for the Florida A&M Rattlers. He has another cousin who's quarterback in Wakala High School this year, having a fine year. First and 10 West Georgia, they're on 44-yard line. Barker drops back, takes the handoff, throws and it bounces in front of Nick Neal, the split end who was coming across the middle. Mark at that time got a little bit of pressure from Dale Tarver, the sophomore defensive end from Seal, Alabama for Valdosta State College. I think Barker had to throw that ball about a second before he wanted to. His Neal was a little bit open, but uh, Barker not in rhythm with Neal, thus the incompletion. One minute, seven seconds to play in the third period. Valdosta State College on top, 35-14 in a Gulf South Conference homecoming game for the Blazers. Second 10, West Georgia, their own 44-yard line. Staying in the one-back set. Parker this time drops straight back to pass. Throws a little screen pass. It's almost intercepted by two out off the State College players. Scott Mowry in there. No, oh, that's Jimmy Brookins in there along with Dale Tarver. Both of them are going to the interception. And there is a flag down right at the 50-yard line. 
pass interference is called against West Georgia as VSC was going for the interception. Both men are entitled, both the offensive player and the defensive player are entitled to make a reception of a pass that's thrown. West Georgia just pushed one of the VSC defenders out of the way. The penalty is going to be stepped off from the 44-yard line against West Georgia. It's going to be a 15-yard penalty, which moves the ball back to the West Georgia 29-yard line. Pass interference on the offense. Loss of 15 yards and a loss of down. So now it's third down and 25 to go for West Georgia back on their own 29-yard line. And you can imagine the Blazers are going to be playing pass defense on this down. You know that. I say again, West Georgia going backwards and it puts them in a hole, third and 25. Of course, Dave Barker is capable of making a big play as he's shown earlier this afternoon. Yes, he adds a defensive man to the secondary, only a three-man line rushing. Parker drops straight back, hands off to Stevie Young on a draw play. Young comes up across the 30 to the 32, and Daryl Tarver is there to make the stop. Come out off the State College along with Jimmy Brookins, number 10, a gain of only about four yards for Stevie Young, the running back who has had a fine career at West Georgia College. But the gain of four brings up a fourth and 21 for the Blazers. The ball on the 33, and Randy Fisher drops back as single safety for the Blazers. Mike Lilly, the punter for West Georgia, standing on his own 18-yard line. The Braves are a little slow getting a man onto the field. He's there now. There's the snap back, and the kick is off. It's a high kick that Fisher is going to take at his own 32-yard line. He's up to the 35, jumps to the 40, and is wrapped up there. Oh, after he struggles across the 40. He was wrapped up on the 39-yard line. He struggles up across the 40 to the 43-yard line for Randy Fisher a punt return of about 10 yards. Randy Fisher wasn't giving up on that play. As he jumped over a couple people, ran by a few, and then carried a few on his back until he finally put down. And uh, nice hearted run there by Randy Fisher. Fisher is second in the Gulf South Conference in individual punt returns. He had had seven for an average of 11.4 yards coming into today's game. He follows Rodney Jones of the University of North Alabama, who had been averaging 11 and a half yards on 10 punt returns. Donnie Hill takes the handoff. On Ty Cottle, the quarterback, on the sweep around the left-hand side, comes across the 45, across midfield, to the 47-yard line of West Georgia as the third quarter comes to an end. South Africa State College, 35, West Georgia, 14. We'll be back in 60 seconds. We're getting an education. You're getting great television. From the Department of Communication Arts at Valdosta State College, we're BSC TV. touchdown in Valdosta State College history. 
a little screen pass this time. Cottle hits Akers. It was a little slow in developing as Howard Akers drifted into the backfield from his tight end position. Ty Cottle went back about five extra yards and then dumped it off to the junior college transfer. And he is close enough for the referee to call a timeout to bring the sticks out to measure for the possibility of a first down. That was third and four for the Blazers at the West Georgia 36. Or at the, uh, the ball was actually back about the 39-yard line. They stretch the sticks out, and it is a first down from out off the State College. Ball is now on the 36-yard line. They had changed the scoreboard on me. First to 10, Blazers. The West Georgia, 36, BSC in front, 35 to 14. Hoping for an impressive victory for this homecoming crowd, which probably numbers between five and 6,000 at Cleveland Field. High formation for VSC to pitch back to Jeremiah Blunt. He sticks his head to the 25. Somebody lost the helmet as Jeremiah Blunt came to the 30 before five. West Georgia Braves pick him up and just literally carry, carry him back across the 35. That was power yardage by Jeremiah Blunt as he just hit everybody and again take it off someone's helmet and he went from being stopped at the line to picking up five yards. I saw a red helmet come flying out of that stack. I didn't know if it was a VSC Blazer or a West Georgia Braves that lost his head. It is a defensive lineman for West Georgia, but it is second and five for the Blazers at the 31-yard line. The back in an eye formation. Teals to the near side, Fisher to the wide side. Tight end on the near side for the Blazers. Cottle throws a little hitch pass to Randy Fisher. He's at the 30 to the 25. Randy Fisher down to the 20. Inside the 20 at the West Georgia 19, first down, out off the State College. The hitch pattern works once more for the VSC Blazers. And that's 11 of 15 passing for Ty Cotter for 142 yards, no interceptions. And what can you say about the fine performance of the freshman on homecoming? Cotter brought into action because of some disciplinary action with uh, Mark Dace. Dace is on the sidelines. He is dressed out to play today. He's kneeling back about the 35-yard line, watching the action. As the Blazers are moving down the field, this time Cottle hands off to Clark, going off the left-hand side. Clark has three yards down inside the West Georgia 20. We'll call it the 16, 17-yard line. Gain of three for Eric Clark. And the clock runs down to 11 minutes, 42 seconds to play in the football contest. Jeremiah Blunt comes in at tailback for the Blazers. Randy Fisher, Darian Teals, the flanker is split in for VSC. Two tight ends for Valdosta the State College. Keith Jones on the near side, James McCray on the far side with only one back in the backfield. Cottle pitches it out to Jeremiah Blunt, who goes around the left-hand side. A flag comes flying out from one of the referees as Blunt gets down inside the 15 to the 14-yard line, a gain of three on the carry. And let's check out the penalty, Dave. Looks like holding against Valdosta State College. That'll bring it back, but of course, in a way, it's kind of gives them a chance to run some more time off the clock, but up by three touchdowns. That's uh, not a lot of clock for 21 points for West Georgia. 11 minutes, one second left to play in the football contest. Blazers on top, as we've said, 35 to 14. And the power unit for Valdosta State College comes out. The spread formation comes back in, or the wide receivers as the two tight ends come to the near sideline. So Randy Fisher goes to the slot on the near side. Darian Fields is split out at the end on the near side. Donnie Harrell lines up a tailback. Eric Clark, no, John Royal's in at fullback now. Cottle hands off to Donnie Harrell. He dances across the 25, down about the 24, and there's another flag on the play. That one's thrown over in the vicinity of the far side around one of the VSC linemen. I don't know if the Blazers are going to be called for holding a second consecutive time or not. Yes, they are. Holding against Valdosta State College on a second 14 play is going to move the Blazers back even further. One of the officials comes to the near sideline to tell head coach Mike Cavan who is guilty of holding. Offensive line coach George Collins, an All-American at the University of Georgia played for the St. Louis Cardinals. Now coaching the offensive line for the VSC Blazers is standing there with his hands crossed, disappointed in somebody. 
who has been caught holding for Valdosta to State College. The referees marked the ball back to the 35-yard line, so it's going to be second down and 24 for VSC. Back on their own 34-yard line. Stay in the I formation. Acres goes split to the far side. Teals and Fisher both on the near side. Backs in the I formation. Collar drops straight back to pass. Looks, May throws a little screen pass out here to Donnie Harrell. Donnie's down to the 30, down to the 25, and rolls to the 23 yard line for a gain of about 12 yards before West Georgia finally gets to him. Donnie Harrell, a nice little reception there on a swing pass. Wall was set up in front of him. And the junior from Middleburg, Florida, gains 12 yards. But that's still going to leave Valdosta State College a long way to go to third and 13 now. Ball's marked on the West Georgia 23. We have 10 minutes and 10 seconds to play in the contest. BSC on top, 35 to 14. Fisher goes to the far side, feels at the far side. Acre lines up on splits in the near side. The back's in the eye. Royal at fullback, Harold at tailback. Scholar drops back to pass, gets some pressure. Now he throws wide open. Randy Fisher down at the five. Randy Fisher scores for Valdosta State College. A heads up play by Ty Cottle and Randy Fisher as Fisher came open across the middle. Cottle ducks away from the rush from West Georgia and completes the pass 23 yards. Randy Fisher, Valdosta State College scores again. Great composure from a freshman quarterback as he was about to get pulled down, took one step up. Looked up the field, saw it. Randy Fisher wide open. Fisher takes the ball in for a touchdown. And what more can you say about the fine performance of Ty Cottle? Nine minutes, 48 seconds to play in the football contest. Blazers call a timeout, it appears, or someone takes a timeout before the extra point attempt. While there's a timeout on the field, let's take 30 seconds for a message from our local sponsors. This is the Blazers Sports Network. Student produced and community oriented. A division of the Department of Communication Arts in the School of the Arts at Valdosta State College. We're VSC TV. College 41, West Georgia 14 in a Gulf South Conference game today. Homecoming at Valdosta State College. The Blazers up 41 to 14 in the alumni and student body and graduates and visitors are all very pleased to see this kind of a score. Rodney Falk in to try the extra point today. Snap is down, the kick is up, the kick is good, and BSC has jumped in front 42 to 14 with 9.48 left to play. Time out on the field. Let's take 60 seconds for a word from our local sponsors. This is the Blazers Sports Network.
We have nine minutes and 40 seconds to play in the third period, fourth period here at Cleveland Field. Barker still in at quarterback for the Braves. This time he throws incomplete on the far side out about the 32-yard line trying to hit the flanker out there. I believe that was Tim Glanton on the far side that he tried to hook up with. Pass falls incomplete, and the Braves are facing a second and 10. Next week, Dave Smith, we go to Savannah to take on the Savannah State Tigers, an SIAC team that uh, Valdosta State College played for homecoming here last year. It's the second game in a four-game series between the two schools. Right now, West Georgia, second 10, their own 27. Barker drops straight back to pass, throws a little swing pass out to Stevie Young. Stevie's got it up to the 34-yard line before he's stopped by Jimmy Brookins and Calvin Orr for Valdosta State College. Danny Metcalf also in on the stop for BSC. The gain is about seven out to the 35-yard line. It's going to be a third and two for West Georgia at their own 35-yard line. BSC will be headquartered at the Howard Johnson's over in Savannah. The team will travel over next Friday, spend Friday night. Game time is at 1 p.m., I believe. We'll check that before we go off the air to let you know for certain. West Georgia, third and two right now. They're on 35-yard line. Barker is pressured and gets it out to Neil Young, who is up to the 40-yard line before Bobby Booker makes the stop. But it's the first down for West Georgia. Barker that time had a little unexpected pressure from Don Austin State College's Rod Calloway, freshman out of Cedar Shoals High School in Athens, who jumped up in his face. Barker was surprised to see him and just did get the ball off. Calloway was in there in a hurry. And, uh, of course, Barker had to throw the ball a little bit quick, but able to complete it. BSC folks looking forward to getting over to Savannah next week, going in 5-1 and one on the season. And, uh... Friday night, we'll be at Spanky's to have some those good chicken fingers. West Georgia runs the sweep out across the 40-yard line before Scott Mallory is there along with Calvin Orr, Bobby Brooker to put the stops on Brooks Benton, the second-string fullback for West Georgia after a gain of only a yard and a half out just across the 41. We'll call it the 42 where it's going to be second down and eight for West Georgia. Folks over at Spanky's in Savannah and Brunswick do an excellent job with those chicken fingers, and we're looking forward to getting over there next Friday night. Seven minutes, 40 seconds to play in the contest. BSC on top, 42 to 14. West Georgia with a second nine on their own 41. Marker drops straight back and finishes up with this play by Calloway. He got his hand up there that time. The freshman from Athens, Georgia. Cedar Shoals High School has already knocked one pass down today. He's been getting some penetration. This time he gets his hands up, makes the interception and foul off the State College is set up on the West Georgia 33-yard line. That interception almost reflected the interception by Eric Faulkner, whereas they were going in with the pressure, simply put their hands up, batted the ball, and was able to come back down with it. And again, fine interception there by Rod Calloway. Coach Dave Napier comes over and tells Rod Calloway what a fine job he did. The Blazers come back to action with John Oil and fullback coming across the 30 down to the 29-yard line of West Georgia. A gain of four yards for John Royal. He's only carried the ball twice so far this year, has six yards rushing from Valdosta State College. John Royal, who is out of Douglas, Georgia played at Coffee County High School. He's a redshirt freshman for VSC, 5'10", 195 pounds. His father is the head football coach at Douglas County High School, or Coffee County High School, rather. This time, the Blazers come with a pitch sweep and a fumble that's going to, no, not roll out of bounds, but re be recovered by West Georgia at the 27-yard line. That was Edward Jackson, a freshman out of America's High School in America's Georgia. Who was carrying the ball on the little toss sweep, got down inside the 25-yard line. The ball just popped loose out of Jackson's hands. West Georgia recovered as the ball was rolling out of bounds. The Braves get the ball back on their own 24 with 6 minutes, 47 seconds left to play. Up to that point, Valdosta State scored three consecutive uh, drives. 
So that ends their streak at three, but they're still up 42-14 in good shape. So the interception by Callaway goes by the boards, but this time West Georgia comes with a little fullback power, and that's Adams, the first-team fullback, Larry Adams, who's a senior who has not seen that much action so far today, comes powering up across the 30 to the 30 three-yard line, close to a first down. The referee is going to bring the markers in to check to see if he got the yardage enough for the first down. We've got six minutes, 31 seconds left to play in the contest. BSC on top, 42 to 14. After the Blazers were tied 14 to 14, they got off to a 14 nothing start. West Georgia came back, tied the game at 14, and the Blazers have added four touchdowns since that period. Measurement shows that the ball is about uh, half a foot shy of being the first down, so we're going to have a second down. It'll have to be called one at the 33-yard line for West Georgia. Adams is in at fullback for the Braves, and Strozier lines up at the tailback behind him. We have a new quarterback in there for West Georgia, maybe Ken Harrison. He hands off to Adams at the 35-yard line. Adams has the yardage for the first down for West Georgia. Taking a look at the rest of the VSC schedule for the remainder of the year after the trip over to Savannah next Saturday afternoon. Take on the Savannah State Tigers in a non-conference game, which will kick off at 1.30 p.m. in Savannah. And I understand it's homecoming for Savannah State next week. The Blazers get back on the road and travel to Clinton, Mississippi. Another interception there for VSC. Roger Copeland steps in front of the pass. Brings it back about 10 yards. And again, VSC threatening to score here. Roger Copeland, another freshman for Valdosta State College, played at Clark Central in Athens. Steps in front of the pass for West Georgia, returns it down inside the 30 to about the 32 yard line where the Blazers go into action first and 10. Darrell Funderburg in at quarterback for Valdosta State College today. John Royal at fullback. Edward Jackson lined up at the tailback. Funderburg hands it off to Royal going into the center of the line. Royal's down across the 25 to about the 22-yard line. Gain of almost five yards on the play for John Royal. That's going to be second and five for the Blazers. Jackson, the freshman out of Americas, and the Blazers are going to be facing a fourth down and four 
at the West Georgia nine yard line. This will be an interesting call to see what the Blazers do. <laughs> kind of in a bad situation here. 28 point lead, three minutes, six seconds left to play in the contest. Sammy King and Akers split out to the far side. There is a flag on the play as Thunderbird hands it off to Royal just going right into the middle. That will stop the clock with 2.59 left to play. Call is going to be holding against Valdosta State College. It was fourth down, four yards to go. Royal, it looks like, came up just a few inches short of the first down. Maybe a foot short. The holding call against VSC is going to be declined by West Georgia, and the Braves will take over on downs just outside their own five-yard line between the five and the six with two minutes, 59 seconds left to play in the contest. A homecoming victory for the Valdosta State College Blazers. That's three homecoming wins in a row for VSC. Two years ago, the Blazers knocked off Bishop College. Last year, Savannah State. This year, West Georgia on the Braves' first trip to play a football game at Cleveland Field. West Georgia lines up in a wishbone formation. They hand it off to one of the running backs coming up across the 10-yard line. Sandy Strozier is stopped by Clifford Scott playing in there on defense for the Blazers. The gain is about five yards up to the 11 with the clock down to two minutes, 35 seconds left to play. Oh, Dawson State's done this game uh, in this game because of an all-around play by everybody, offense, defense, special teams, and it's a good game to see on homecoming. See everybody get in the action, everybody take part in a, a big win for Valdosta State. And off goes to the fullback who is up just shy of the 15-yard line. Gain of about three on the play. It's going to bring up a third and two for the Braves on their own 14-yard line. The clock rolls down to two minutes, four seconds, two minutes, three seconds, 2.02 to play in the contest. BSC a 28-point lead ahead, 42 to 14 in this Gulf South Conference game. This time, West Georgia tries to go over the left-hand side of the Blazer defense, where VSC is right there to make the stop. I think coming up to make the first hit was Charles Reddick, 5'9", 258-pound freshman out of Boston, Georgia. Uh, CH folks live over in Boston. Charles Reddick played at Central High of Thomasville. Oh. They're going to measure for the first down. Looks like it may be a little bit short, and West George is going to be facing a fourth down. Yes, the referee says it's about five inches short of being a first down, so it's fourth down and inches to go for the Braves. Minute 18 seconds left in the contest. They send in the punter, Mike Lilly. I don't know if they're going to try something on here to get the first down if they'll snap it short and run it or if uh, they'll let Lilly go ahead and kick and give the ball back to Mount Austin State College with a minute left to play. Snap is back. Lilly does get the kick off. Clifford Scott has it at the VSC 49. He's at the 45, dances to the 40, breaks loose and is out of bounds at the 35-yard line of West Georgia. Clifford Scott, a nice 17-yard punt return that time for Valdosta State College, and with exactly one minute left in the contest, VSC has the ball on the West Georgia 35-yard line. Coach Kevin has to be pleased with the performance of the team. After being trounced by Troy State, they had the week off, and I'm sure he was interested to see what kind of heart these players had coming off of such a severe loss. And with that weak layoff, I think that really helped them, and these players wanted to come out and play, and they really showed it today. And it's fitting that today is homecoming. Thunderbird at quarterback, pitches back to Edward Jackson on the pitch sweep. Jackson down to the 30, breaks loose at the 20, to the 15, and then Edward Jackson scores. touchdown as a route off the State College Blazer. In fact, he had not officially carried the ball prior to today's game. His first action 
and the freshman from America scores a touchdown for VSC. Fire and run as he started inside, just kept on moving out, and finally saw an opening, put on the speed, and went right by the West Georgia defense. 35 yard run, and uh, about the state just add to that total. 1984, the Blazers scored 49 points against Clark College, and 85, 49 points against West Georgia, and 86, 49 points against the University of Tennessee Martin, and in 1987, 49 points again against the West Georgia Braves. DSC 49, West Georgia 14, 51 seconds left in the contest. Let's take 30 seconds for this word from our local sponsors. This is the Blazers Sports Network. Valdosta State College Television, a division of the Department of Communication Arts and the School of the Arts, offering a variety of entertainment for every viewer. Stay tuned with VSC TV.